two teams from the great state of Georgia battling it out in this single elimination 11U bracket ball game. Not just two teams from the state of Georgia, but two teams from the metro Atlanta area representing here. As Peachtree City's home plate Chili Dogs take on Marietta Georgia's East Cobb Colt 45s. Ground ball down to third. Felix will field and throw across the diamond for the first out of the inning. Natureman retire on the 5-3. I'm going to tell you something. Depending on the official scoring of the play by Mosley when he was at the plate as the second batter of the second inning, if you scored him reaching as an error on the first baseman or the shortstop, you could have legitimately thrown an error on to the shortstop on that play. If you scored that play an error, then Thad Ector right now on the mound is, well, looking at a no-hitter. As Aiden Moses steps to the plate. Aiden was a strikeout victim in his only other plate appearance. That coming to end the first inning. Takes fastball. In on the belt, and he's walked him. Doesn't mean that Thad has not had base runners, however. That is his third walk of the ball game so far. Given up a couple of stolen bases. Speaking of which, this will be a stolen base for Moza. Two strikeouts so far in the ball game for Hector. Right hander set and deal. That one stays high. To Colin Hennick. Or Heineck, if you prefer. You'll have to pardon me. I did not get the pronunciation before the ball game. But Colin, pronunciation or no, a pop up victim his first time up. And he's ahead in the count. That's obviously a point. Boys from Marietta, Georgia need a rally. Down three to nothing in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Oh, that one in the dirt with a fastball. Going to allow the runner to move down to third. And it comes on ball four. So runners at the corners all of a sudden. And that will prompt a visit. A member of the coaching staff, Peachtree City squad. Coach Gosden. Neil Gosden comes out to the mound to talk to Thad Ector. Two walks in the inning. Ground ball started things. Natureman was retired 5-3 on the ground out. Then a walk to Moza, and he stole second. Then a walk to Heineck. Moza took third on the wild pitch of said ball four. That'll get us to Mosley. William, the only man to reach via contact in the ball game. Again, I know that sounds funny. <laughs> Hence, William Kent, our man in charge of the production today, laughing at me over there while trying to work the camera. Sorry. Throw down to third on the stolen base attempt. The man at first, Hennick or Heineck in at second base with the steal. So now two men in scoring position. Don't have an official score out here. We're in center field. The official score obviously behind a home plate down there. This one lined in the left center field gap. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Makes it a moot point now. Throw down to third and the runner in safely. An RBI single for William Mosley. He'll reach for the second time in the ball game. Break up the apparent no hitter and get East Cobb on the board.
finally have East Cobb. Boys from Marietta, Georgia puncturing the scoreboard. Their first run is a, a ball team that, that hits the ball a little bit. So to see them scoreless into the bottom half of the fourth frame is, uh, well, quite an accomplishment. Again, for those of you just tuning in now, on the bottom half of the fourth, the equivalent of the bottom half of the seventh in a regular nine-inning ball game. And as you see, the boys from Peachtree City, Neil Gosden's squad, as he's back behind home plate catching his new man on the mound, which will be Adam Barnett. Barnett going to come in from the outfield and take the pitching duties from Thad Ector. And Ector was good now. Let's make sure that we give young Thad Ector his due. He was very, very good. Just looked as though he might have been running out of gas here in the fourth inning. Thad going to finish uh, his ball game with only two strikeouts, but again, had a no-hitter going uh, by my scorecard, had a no-hitter going until that last batter there of the fourth inning. Did uh, walk quite a few men, one, two, three, four walks, and of course did give up the one run, which is earned in this inning. Three to one the score. Colt 45s of Marietta, Georgia. You see the score on your screen, and they are at the plate with just one man gone in the inning. A ground out, consecutive walks, a wild pitch, a stolen base, and an RBI single. That basically your storyline of the inning. And that has put runners at second and third with just one man out in this home half of, of the fourth inning. This is an elimination ball game, so you lose this one, and you're uh, packing your bags and, and headed home. Strike one. Outside corner with an off-speed delivery. Of course, for both of these teams heading home not too far from here, obviously, to Metro Atlanta teams. 445's trying to tie the ball game, need a hit. High pop, out of play. 0-2. It's Ben Hamaker at the plate. Hamaker walked in his only other plate appearance. Officially, no plate appearances, of course. Did have a stolen base. The great jokes of baseball. <laughs> Swing and a miss. How can you tell me a guy doesn't have an official plate appearance if he had a stolen base after he reached base? I digress. Let's get double day on line one. After the strikeout to Hamaker. Now Jason Keefe. Speaking of strikeouts, he have just one plate appearance in the ball game, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. But Keith now on the mound, got a chance to get us to a tie ball game and actually make himself the pitcher of record. Take his teammate, Cody McGill, off the hook for the loss. Swing and a miss. Oh boy, young Keith has a beautiful, beautiful swing. Got a piece to stay alive in the at bat. Still 0 2. Ball right back up the middle and into center field for a base hit. One run is in to make it three to two. Tying run will stay at third. RBI single for Jason Keith. So a ground out, a couple of walks, and a couple of RBI singles with a strikeout worked in as well in the inning. Now Cody McGill to the plate. I believe that's McGill at the plate right now. We'll wait for him to turn to the side a little bit. Let me get a glance at his number. Cody with the tying run down at third. Was talking about him just a moment ago. He's got a chance to take himself off the hook for the loss. He gave up the three runs. Actually uh, was saddled with 
one of the runs, I believe. Maybe two, maybe two. I'll have to go back and check the scorecard. Swing and a miss by Cody. Definitely gave up the first run, of course, which put him behind in the ball game. He'd still be on the hook for the loss, that is. Got a chance with a clean hit to tie this ball game up. And the 0-1. Fouled away, snap throw down to second, and the runner is in. Pinch runner, by the way. Hamaker came in to pinch run for Jason Keith, who delivered that RBI single. One of the run uh, substitution rules, I should say, that of course is so prevalent in travel ball. Runners with good leads. Pop foul right side and headed out of play. This one of four ball games, of course, going on right now. Across the East Cobb Baseball Complex, inside of the 2015 TBS Open, 11U bracket, single elimination bracket. So we'll be down to four teams here within the next, oh, let's call it half hour, maybe 45 minutes. We'll be down to the semifinalists. Of course, you can get all the scoring updates right here on TrebleBallSelect.com. Our next ball game, first pitch inside of the 11U classification, uh, slated, scheduled for 1 p.m. That'll be the winner of this ball game versus the winner of Titans Baseball Blue for the Alabama lead. Cut on and missed for the final out of the inning. But two very, and I mean very important runs, come across in the bottom half of the fourth inning for the Colt 45s of Marietta, Georgia. Now they're right back in the ball game, trailing by one on TravelBallSelect.com. Travel Ball Select, a nation's baseball partner to create the most competitive series in youth baseball, the Travel Ball National Championship Series, which the championships will be played right here at East Cobb. If you think your team can compete, go to TravelBallSelect.com or NationsBaseball.com to enter a qualifier. 135 teams from 25 states are already coming to this year's championship event. Of course, as each year goes on here on TravelBallSelect.com, we have more and more broadcasts, more and more Travel Ball events. I was very, very fortunate and honored to be on the play-by-play -play duties just last year for a couple of the Travel Ball uh, Championship, National Championship events, and I gotta tell you something. As a man who's made his living for over 20 years in calling youth sports, all the way from amateur sports, as I like to say, all the way down from college uh, to sports just like this, boy, that was quite an honor. Something that I put right there at the top last year's affair, especially at the top of my all-time experiences. Jason Keefe still on the mound now for the East Cobb Academy Colt 45s of Marietta, Georgia who now trail 3-2 to two after a two-run bottom half of the fourth inning to the home plate Chili Dogs of Peachtree City, Georgia. It's Adam Barnett, Cameron Hill, and Jacoby Taylor, visitors half of the fifth and the strike. 
gets us back to a full count of three and two. Adam granted out to the second baseman and his only other plate appearance. This one he gets up into the jet stream into left. It's carrying to the track and caught by the left fielder. Now for those of you maybe just tuning in, we've talked about it all day, but I guess I better repeat it once again. The jet stream up just above the tree line or I suppose in the tree line, above the fence line here at the parks in Metro Atlanta at the East Cobb Baseball Complex a, a veritable jet stream above us here, and you can really see that the two uh, the two American flags that are at the park are always doing something different. Right now, <laughs> Matthew Kent, our director, producer in charge of things, absolutely stunned by the variance between the two versions of Old Glory. Behind the picture you see on your screen, you can actually see, well, no, now you can't see it. It's off to the right. Uh, the uh, the post in which Old Glory is attached to. Uh, there there we go. Now Matthew, going to get a shot of it. You can see that one is blowing to where the wind is carrying it uh, to right field and into foul territory. Now, conversely, the American flag that is down the left field line as a strikeout of Hill is recorded. Two outs in the inning now, and here's Jacoby Taylor. Conversely, the flag beyond the outfield down the left field line, complete opposite side, yet along the same line of trajectory, is completely blowing out towards left field. So, if any of that makes any sense to you, in other words, you've got two flags within, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe not quite 400 feet of each other blowing in completely opposite directions yet <laughs> what's wild about it is that both of those flags flag posts flank this very field that we're on and that's the reason I bring it up that means in other words once the ball gets up into the air in the outfield here on field eight at the historic East Cobb baseball complex the ball just the wind just plays havoc with it up there. Weather forecast called for 70 plus and pretty much blue skies today. Round ball down to third. Great job by the third baseman to come on over, cut that ball off, and fire to first. William Mosley has been some kind of player in this ball game today. And one, two, three go the boys from Peachtree City. That an absolutely huge 1-2-3 inning for the East Cobb Colt 45s of Marietta. Now down by a run to the bottom half of the fifth we go on TravelBallSelect.com. Bottom half of the order for Marietta. Down by a run. Bottom half of the fifth inning. Thanks for joining us again here on TravelBallSelect.com. Alongside Matthew Kent, I'm Chris Mooningham. Cooper Tindick. Grayson Gallich. Pierce, uh, Pierce Crane. Guaranteed three in the home half of the fifth. 
Cooper, a ground out victim in his only other plate appearance so far in this ball game. High fly in the left. Now they're going to kind of die out in short left. Route number one. No problem at all there. Came off the mound and moved to left. Now Galich. Grayson with an F8 and his only other plate appearance. Tries to bunt for a base hit. And this one kicks foul. Little guy with great speed. See him doing that a lot. Of course, first time I've had the opportunity to see that young man or either of these teams. Well, at least these versions. You cover enough of these tournaments, travel ball I mean. You'll see some of the same programs coming through here. And some of the same kids as they grow up through the system. Strike to Grayson and now Gallich behind 0-2. Seen a lot of the home plate chili dogs program throughout the years. Curveball that sweeps high and outside. Grayson back in the at bat at one and two. East Cobb, Colt 45s. Have been busy so far in the travel ball schedule. Now two and two, Grayson's battled to even up the count. Played up in a couple of tournaments so far in the early going of this season. One and two at the Triple Crown Elite Tournament. All into bad boys and Titans baseball, two well-known programs, of course. Now three and two. Little guy battling. With Barnett on the mound. Adam winds and fires. This one lined back up the box, fielded at second, throw to first, not in time. Speed always kills down that first base line. Second, make that the third hit of the ball game for the East Cobb Colt 45s of Marietta, Georgia. Obviously their first hit of this inning Three singles, by the way, just three singles. Base hits of the ball game. Grayson using his tremendous speed and getting down to second. Incidentally, a pass ball going to be issued there to the catcher. Now Pierce Crane. Pierce reached in his only plate appearance, although not officially. Wait a minute, what? That's right, he had a wall. I love the grand old game of baseball, and I love the symmetry and the, the rules of it, but I also love to make fun of the walk rule, the lack of a official plate appearance, that is. Well, two shot out in the right. Got a chance to fall, but a great job by the right fielder to not bite on that ball that looked like right off the bat it was going to fly deep. He didn't break back, didn't break either way on the ball. That young man has had some great, great coaching out in right. Meanwhile, Crane is retired, F9. And that'll get back to the top of the order in Sutton Smith. Who takes a breaking ball for a strike. Another reminder, loser falls out of play here for the weekend in East Cobb. Grayson breaking to third and a foul ball. Winner advances on to the semifinals, a 1 p.m. first pitch schedule, where the winner of this one will take on either Titans baseball blue, I think the Titans out of North Carolina, if memory serves, or the Alabama Elite, those two teams playing right now in their own elimination ball game. Grayson's breaking for third again, the throw down not in time. Eight teams remaining in this tournament, of course, right now we're in the quarterfinals. Elite Gamers, Crawford, East Cobb Astros, the Cougars, the Aces from Georgia, 
a real Georgia feel here. And then, of course, the four teams that I mentioned a moment ago. Barnett takes it five. Swing and a miss, and the inning is over. Boys from Marietta threaten in the fifth inning, but cannot push across the potential tying run. And so now, Chili Dogs from Peachtree City, Georgia, will come to the plate looking to add a little insurance, just three outs away from advancing on TravelBallSelect.com. Top half of the order for the leading gentleman from Peachtree City, Georgia. And a ground ball to start things immediately. First pitch swinging was Barry Manning. And he'll be retired on said first pitch. A ground ball down to third, so 5-3. Manning is retired. Second consecutive batter has been retired by the Colt 45 third baseman. And Barry now 0 for 3 in this ball game. A little surprising. Another test of third. That, maybe not the man you want to be hitting it to down there. He is at himself quite a, a defensive affair today. Javon Compton retired. Compton, that's the first time he's been retired today. He'll be two for three at this point with two singles and two runs scored. This one's shot in the right and falling for a base hit. Headed to third. Hey, this could be close, and they got him! Oh, my! What a play in right! An absolutely tremendous throw by Sutton Smith to gun down Isaiah Felix after the hit. Holy smokes, a single, and then he's retired at first. So, we make our way to the bottom half. You know what? Let's just go ahead and keep it here. We'll keep it here as we make our way to the bottom half of the sixth frame. Again, to set this up for a lot of you uh, moms and pops and grandmothers and grandfathers out there watching this, the final frame of this ball game. If you're watching, well, no matter where you're watching from, of course, out in Internet land. This is the final frame. Winner advances on to the semifinals inside the tournament. Loser is eliminated from the tournament, of course. One more scheduling reminder for you. We'll be right back here live on TravelBallSelect.com with our third game of the day. That'll be, well, the winner of this ball game facing the winner of Alabama Elite from, of course, the state of Alabama, and uh, Titans Baseball Blue. I believe Titans Baseball Blue out of North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, I believe that's what you've got in that matchup. Alabama versus North Carolina. Winner advances on to the semifinals, faces the winner of, of this ball game. Again, that first pitch scheduled for 1 p.m. Eastern time. Adam Barnett's first pitch. Trying to bunt for a base hit. Got a chance at it. Turn to the first. Safe. 
Slade Natureman. Slade reaches for the first time today after a pop-up to short, a ground out to third, and now he reaches on the bunt single. So Adam Barnett standing on the mound in relief of Thad Ector over the last couple of innings, trying to sew down the win for Ector and keep his team moving forward in this tournament. Aiden Moza to the plate now. As Barnett checks, the runner at first. It's the home plate Chili Dogs in red, white, and blue in the field right now from Peachtree City, Georgia. Runners breaking, headed to third, and out in second! Holy smokes, they got him at second. One of the few times today we've seen a young man gunned out via a, the stolen base attempt on the base pass. And he is down right now on the turf. Did not see any sort of collision. He may have, must have been shaken up on the play. You can hear them talking down there. There was a little bit of contact. Look, he, you know, he may have taken a knee to the midsection. They don't pay me to speculate, so I'll keep that to a minimum. What we do know now, though, of course, is that is the first man retired here in this bottom half of the final inning. Once again, we continue the game reset. The home plate Chili Dogs. That's their team name. They're based out of Peachtree City, Georgia. And, of course, the cities and the states as important as anything else. The Peachtree City, Georgia boys trying to continue their weekend of play and upset the Colt 45s, the East Cobb Colt 45s from right here in Marietta, Georgia. Both teams out of the metro Atlanta area. So a bunt single to start the inning by Natureman. He's caught stealing. And now Moza is at the plate with a 1-0 count. Aiden, a strikeout and a walk in the ball game so far. So 0 for 1 officially with a stolen base. And now a 1-1 count. That actor started the ball game on the mound for the boys from Peachtree City, Georgia. Worked into the fourth inning for giving up his first hit to William Mosley in that fourth inning. Turned out to be an RBI single. Got East Cobb back into this ball game at three to one. He was then lifted out of the ball game. Barnett gave up a hit to Keefe, an RBI single that drove in the second run of the ball game for East Cobb. And that was the end of the day for Hector, at least on the record. Barnett been on the mound ever since then. Working what is now, let's see, one, two full innings of retirement, of course. That one stays high. Counts run to three and two. And played straight away here in center. He's shaded towards center, by the way. He's got a lot of room down each line. This one he pops down the right side and out of play. A lot of room right up the middle. If he could scream one past Barnett. Curveball just off the outside corner for ball four. Second consecutive walks. Second walk in as many at-bats for Moza. And that'll get Colin Hynek, or Hynek if you prefer, to the plate. Colin, a pop-up to first base in his first plate appearance. And a walk his last time up. Runners break. Curveball's high. 
runners in the second with a stolen base. So Collin needs a base hit to potentially tie the ball game. Tying run in scoring position with one man out. Never seems to fail when you come to the East Cop Baseball Complex and take in some of the best youth ball across America. You're going to get some high drama. Barnett steps off. This is our second one-run affair, by the way. For those of you who missed our opening ball game of the broadcast day, 6-5 to five, the final in that one. Swing and a miss. Actually, check that. He got a piece of it. No matter. Still strike one. If Colin can get on, or at least keep from being the final out. Ground ball down to third. A great stop at third. Throw across the diamond for the out. Tremendous stop by Isaiah Felix at third. So two men out now. The boys from Marietta down to their final out. That'll get us to William Mosley. William, who reached on an error his first time up, delivered an absolutely monumental RBI single to break up Thad Ector's no-hitter in the fourth. Also got a couple of stolen bases. Needs a base hit to tie this one up. Runners breaking. Ball gets away from the catcher. So there'll be no play on the base runner headed to third. So certainly a base hit now. We'll tie the ball game up. and two count. Mosley will have to battle. Barnett looks in, kicks and fires. Just off the outside corner. And a couple of the HP Chili Dogs going to have to head back to their positions as they were already sprinting off the field. One and two count now. Right field line, this one curving and out of play. Barnett with the fastball there after missing with a couple of off speed pitches. Single run in the first and two in the fourth. The boys from Peachtree City, Georgia. And then from Marietta came right back in the bottom half of the fourth to get two runs back. And now down to their final out. Swing and a miss, strike three. The run for the number six seed after a pull play continues in the 2015 11U TBS Open Tournament. The home plate Chili Dogs from Peachtree City, Georgia have knocked out a couple of the best teams across the country and advance on to the semifinals of this 2015 tournament. They'll take on either the Alabama Elite or Titans Baseball Blue in the semifinals. Again, first pitch of that ball game scheduled for right around 1 p.m. here on Travel Ball Select. Com. For Matthew Ken, I'm Chris Mooneyham. Thanks for joining us, everybody. 3-2 to two your final. Chili Dogs over Colt 45s. Peachtree City beats Marietta in a battle of Georgia teams on TravelBallSelect.com.